you're being a, a jerk. Why is that girl kind of swerving, or why does she have to hold on to the railing? Are you drunk? Drinking on kicking back the sauce? You know, and they're kidding around, and it's like, no. Wish I could say that's what it was, but no. <laughs> this is how I am on a good day. Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Roth from the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago and the Midwest Regional Traumatic Brain Injury Model System. As a first responder, you are aware that patients with specific injuries and disabilities require special care and attention. An understanding of these needs is especially critical when treating patients who have experienced a traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, is often referred to as a hidden injury because the symptoms associated with this type of injury can be difficult to see. Some people with TBI can seem perfectly healthy at one moment and then display unusual physical and behavioral problems the next. About 90% of people with brain injuries have mild TBI. Most people with mild TBI or concussions are able to resume their normal lives. However, some individuals with mild TBI and also people with moderate to severe TBI may have longer lasting symptoms or even lifelong problems that might interfere with their daily lives. Each year, on average, 1.4 million people in the United States sustain a TBI. Of this number, roughly 50,000 die 235,000 are hospitalized, and 1.1 million are treated and released from an emergency department. At least 5.3 million Americans are living with TBI-related disabilities. There are more than a quarter of a million children and adults currently living in Illinois with disabilities due to a brain injury. The leading causes of TBI are falls, motor vehicle traffic collisions, and assaults. Exposure to blasts is the leading cause of TBI among active duty military personnel in war zones. Our hope with this presentation is that you will gain a stronger understanding of the signs and symptoms of TBI and how they may influence your management of people with these injuries. Uh, I was driving up in uh, Highland Park and I hit a tree doing 70 miles an hour. My injury was on November 2nd. The first thing I remember was being transferred from one hospital to this hospital on December 9th. I didn't know what TBI stood for. They had to ask me every day to see if I could retain the memory of what TBI stood for. I didn't remember that I no longer had my Jeep Wrangler. Waking up in the hospital, thinking that I was in a hotel, looking out at the lake, and thinking, wow, what a beautiful day. There are three types of disabilities that can develop because of a TBI. Physical disabilities, cognitive and language disabilities, and behavioral and emotional disabilities. The kinds of problems seen after TBI have to do with aspects of thinking function, normally broken down into cognitive, behavioral, and affective problems. So meaning thinking function, behaviors acting out types of issues, uh, and then affective mood, depression, anxiety, even mania, various types of mood-related issues. That's sort of the, the universal unifying aspects of impairment after brain injury. Some people will have difficulty with speaking or slurred speech uh, or have weakness on one side of their body or loss of balance walking around even like they look as though they may be a little bit drunk, something like that. But that's quite variable. It doesn't happen to everybody with brain injury. It sounded like I had marbles in my mouth. My speech. I know it sounds fine probably on the camera and in our interview. It's really not. I was very articulate before. I never slurred words or I would never have those senior moments where I forget what I was saying. It happens quite often now and I start slurring all the time.
Some of the effects of TBI are my balance. Uh, my glasses have a prism lens which takes my double vision that I see without glasses and makes them into single vision. Um, my balance is much, much different. My right side, um, it's not apparent to anyone, but it feels like a left hand now. My balance is not very good, so I might kind of like swerve a little to the side or need to hold onto a railing, or go really slowly, or just be unsteady. It's like, I don't know, one of those involuntary things that you just learn how to do. You're not consciously thinking about, oh, I've got to work on my balance, but when I'm tired, it's like that switch is turned off. It's possible to see someone with these physical disabilities and come to the conclusion that they are intoxicated. A medical professional needs to make a full assessment before assuming the patient is inebriated. Brain injury is sometimes referred to as a, as a hidden injury because if someone's had a spinal cord injury, it's really obvious they're in a chair, typically. Uh, if someone's had an amputation, it's really obvious. If someone's had a stroke, it's typically rather obvious. Uh, if someone has a brain injury, there may be no external physical sign that anything's wrong at all. People can misinterpret behaviors um, in that they might appear like they're under the influence of some type of drug or alcohol, and so they may be treated that way. Things that have affected me that you can't see are more emotional and unresponsive laughing or an unres uh, or uncontrollable crying for just for some instance you never know what's going to cause it